Welcome, loyal Pontolians. This series of video tutorials is designed for new players to Mortal Online 2 and is based on my experiences in the game. If you have any further knowledge about the game and the things discussed in these videos, please leave a comment below. Mortal Online 2 is a hardcore sandbox MMORPG made by independent developer Star Vault. It is a loot drop game, meaning that when you die, all of your gear and inventory items are dropped on the ground and can be looted by other players. PvP is a large component of MO2, and player interactions and role-playing have been very fun from my experiences. For this video, we've started the main menu, and we'll be looking through the settings menu. Music volume starts at 50%. I've turned that down myself, and master volume I've also turned down. I found that this helps kind of clear out the game. It can start very loud. The big portion of this menu is voice chat. VoIP is a big deal in MO2, so make sure you have enable voice chat, voice chat volume up because I found that if you have it low, a lot of people tend to speak very quietly. And then for voice chat input, make sure you select the microphone you're using, whether you have a standalone microphone or a headset. And then for voice chat output, I just went with my default setting, but there are a bunch of options you can choose from and you've got to figure out what's going to work best for you. Now between each menu, make sure you click save changes as they won't carry over if you leave the screen. So we're gonna click Save Changes, go back into Settings, and we'll go to the Video tab. For the Video tab, there is a button for Use Recommended Settings. If you click this button, it will run a benchmark. And when it runs the benchmark, it will place the settings where it believes your computer will run best. I've found that it works pretty well when I am streaming and using other programs like OBS, I found that turning down these settings can help with frame rate stability. Uh, I've left all of these settings on the right off. I've ensured that enable multi-threaded rendering is on. This is, this is big if you uh, have a modern CPU, essentially. And then I do play in full screen. I did test it with windowed borderless and didn't see much of a difference, but I do know that my system tends to run better on full screen. One thing that this system, the use recommended settings button does not do is it doesn't turn DLSS on. If you have an NVIDIA RTX card of a 2000 series or higher, you can use this and it will greatly help your performance. I found the ultra quality has been the best for me. Another thing to note is that anti-aliasing is not something you can change once you are in game. This will gray out. You can change all these other settings, but not anti-aliasing. So you wanna make sure this one is figured out when you actually go to get into the game. The next menu is Keybinds. Keybinds is very important and probably the reason you came to this video. There are a few changes that I've made from the default and I'll explain why I've made those changes. The first one is for walk slash faint. I've rebound this to E. Walk faint is something that you're gonna wanna have access to in combat. So putting on E makes it much easier to get to. The next one I changed, if you scroll down into the combat menu, is thrust attack. Thrust attack I've changed to B and overhead attack I've changed to V. The main reason for this is when you get in game, the way that blo the blocking mechanic works is you use your mouse to determine what direction you're gonna block, whether that's left, right, up, or down. Having thrust attack and overhead attack bound also works with blocking. So if I, in game, if I hold B and right click to block, I will what what is called mid block or block a thrust if i press v and right click i will overhead block i've found that in game blocking overhead and mid is kind of tough when you're moving around so this helps it helps you negate errors and block and parry well we'll go over that again later in in the combat video the next change is cast last spell i put on f and self-cast spell, I put on tilde. These are up to you and will also depend on if you're going to be playing as a mage or a spellcaster. If you're gonna be playing as a mage or a spellcaster, these may need to be moved to a more ergonomic position so that you can hit them easily while you're fighting, but that will be up to you. Everything else down here, I've left default.
next section is the chat section. The only changes I've made here is I've made skill message pop-ups and combat message pop-ups active. The combat message pop-ups will show your damage and damage you take in the center of your screen. And then skill message pop-ups will do the same thing for skill increases. I found that these are helpful, but may take away from your immersion. So this one's up to you. And this is something you can change in game and kind of play around with these settings and see if you want them to pop up. I didn't change any of the color schemes. The next section, UI. Again, this is all preference. Uh, use round compass changes the compass at the top of the screen. And then all of these are just for how your UI looks. No real gameplay changes here. And this is all subjective to the player. The next section is gameplay. The one thing I turned on on the left hand side is enable criminal actions. This will affect you later on in the game, but it's good to just turn it on now. The other two things I'd like to point out on the left hand side are thrust as default attack. Thrust as default attack will help people that are using spears and or weapons that like to do stabbing attacks. Uh, this is good to turn on and will make it a little bit easier for you in combat. This is something that you can test in game and turn on and off. I'd suggest working with this if you want to use stabby weapons. And then aim with arrow tip. When you turn this on, instead of using a crosshair in the center of your screen, you use the tip of your arrow to aim. This, I believe, is more of an immersion point than a skill or accuracy point, as I feel like over time you'll get better with both. So this one's up to you. Now on the right-hand side, you have mouse sensitivity, click drag sensitivity and drag click sensitivity. These bottom two will correspond to what style of attack and block you're going to go with. And these can be adjusted to help make it easier to attack and block. Now when you are attacking and blocking, there are three different types, mouse click then drag, mouse drag then click, and movement keys. I'll go over these more in depth in the combat guide, but these just change basically how you're clicking in order to block or if you're gonna use the movement keys. Different people go with different ones. I think click and drag is usually the best. But again, I'll go over that more when we get to the combat tutorial. The last tab is the language tab. This tab is for the different languages. Now on the right hand side, you have percents. This percent tells you how much of the in-game uh, words have been translated to that language. I think this is pretty helpful to determine whether or not you're going to use English or whatever your primary language is. If you're a Spanish speaker, you may want to just try and go with English as only 4% of the game has been converted at this point, but that's up to you. Thanks for watching the settings and keybinds tutorial for Mortal Online 2. Make sure to check out the other tutorial videos coming to this playlist. If you have any other thoughts on this topic, please leave your suggestions in the comments below. If you found this video helpful, please drop a like and consider subscribing to the channel.